I just um, just looked at for the last week at some interesting things that have come up in the media. A DNA test developed in Glasgow linking ageing and poverty. So a gene test that, that seems to show that people that, um, that uh, live shorter um, have certain genes that are abnormal. It's also linked to poverty. A gene defect that gives sperm an invis invisibility cloak to make some couples um, uh, infertile. It's interesting because I, um, I work in this area as well. Another article about um, a longevity gene. There's a big study done um, looking to see why people who live to 100 years old, is there anything different about them compared to people that don't live to the 100 years old? Could you have the gene for insatiable hunger? It was in uh, stuff today. And uh, I probably think some of us probably do. And the worst one is Westerners' love of junk food and booze genetic. <laughs> And uh, I just want to make, make the point that we see in the popular media on a regular basis at the moment lots of stuff about genes. I'm probably more aware of it than a lot of you, um, you folk are, um, but there seems to be a lot of talk about genes and things that run in families and cancer and different diseases, um, and it seems to be more of a, of a popular talking point at the moment than ever before. So what I want to do just in the next... Uh, 10-15 minutes is talk to you about how I understand genetics to exist at the moment. I'm going to move from something that I'm going to call hard um, genetics through to soft genetics. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that's coming up in the media is what I, I'd put in the category of soft genetics. Um, a lot of my background has been in what I'd call the hard genetics, the really valuable stuff where um, we've been able to work up in my lab some gene tests over the last few years for um, people that have a cancer that runs in their families. So for example, um, we know that, that there are genes that cause breast cancer and ovarian cancer in women. Um, and we can, what we can do is, is uh, get some DNA from, from people that think they're from a cancer family, and we can test that DNA and find out whether or not there are mutations in certain genes. And this has revolutionized the life of many people who have been captured um, by this death threat that runs through their family. So we can now tell people, yes, you're at risk of developing cancer in your, in your lifetime. You might be 30 years old and have no apparent disease. But we can test your genes and say, yes, you, you have got a really high risk of developing breast cancer, or no, you've got virtually no risk, you go back to population risk, which is about 10%. So we do have some fantastic gene tests at the moment that can be life-changing for a lot of families. Another gene test that we've been working on in my laboratory is that we've been able to um, look at young children that die unexpectedly. Cot deaths, kids on the sports field. Um, uh, we, we've, many of these, these young children we never see. They're already dead by the time that, um, that we get um, to, uh, to be introduced to the family. Uh, and a, a true example was, was a 13-year-old um, boy, no apparent abnormalities, warming up for a game of hockey, died unexpectedly. Nobody thought to get a DNA sample at the time because they didn't know why he had died. But we were able to go back to his Guthrie card um, from many years ago and get some DNA from his Guthrie card and sequence some genes that we thought might have caused this problem, which was a cardiac problem. So we were able to actually diagnose what had caused his death after the boy had died. We were then able to go back to the family because the family were worried about the younger sister. Was she the same thing going to happen to her? Um, and we were able to sequence her DNA and say, no, nothing was wrong with the younger daughter. You were fine. So the family didn't worry for the rest of their lives about the young daughter, but we found the same mutation in the mother. She'd been having a few palpitations um, over the last few years. She put it down to the death of her son. But the family could have lost a son and a mother within a period of a couple of years. We were able to put on her onto a simple medication that took away the likelihood of her developing heart uh, a sudden cardiac death. So a lot of the new genetics is fantastic. It's made a huge difference to lots of people's lives. And we can identify mutations in individuals and say, something might happen to you in the future. Some of this is really precise. For Huntington, Huntington's disease, we can actually work out not just are you going to die, but how old are you likely to be when you die. So some of it is, is excruciatingly precise. 
What's happened in the last 10, 20 years is we've moved from that hard science to something that's a little bit more woolly and soft and, and fluffy, uh, where we're looking at um, a lot of diseases that are more lifestyle related, like heart disease, common cancer, where it doesn't occur in a family, diabetes, um, and a whole range of, of similar sorts of diseases. And we know that some of these things have a family tendency. If you have a heart attack in the family, other individuals in the family are also likely to have a heart attack at some stage. Not guaranteed, but it's weakly in the family. And what's, a lot of new techniques have been developed recently where we can actually find consistent changes in genes um, that will predispose some people to, to developing um, some condition. It's not a guarantee, but it just increases your probability slightly. It's not one gene, it's probably dozens and dozens of genes, and it's a lot of environment. What we, what we eat and, and uh, um, uh, what, how we sleep and how we exercise and all the things that we already know about are important for good health. So it's this area that's now developing, the, the, the soft science that, um, that, that's uh, been developing in the last few years, and this potentially um, is really, really important because what we like to be able to do is, put pe is to give people advice. Um, we think you're slightly more at increased risk of get getting cancer. Perhaps it, these are some things that you should do. Increase your surveillance. Have your checkups more regularly. You might be increased risk of heart disease. You need to watch your diet, watch what, what you eat, for example. However, the message is, um, is very hard to get across to the general public because th we're talking about risk, and nobody really understands risks very well. To tell somebody they've got to double the risk um, is, sounds alarming, but it might actually, be, uh, might actually have very little impact on their lives. We're also giving the same messages to people that we've been doing for a number of years. You should eat more, uh, more vegetables and, and, and fruit. Um, you should um, smoke less, drink less. We may be saying the same message to, to a lot of individuals. But associated with that is a whole lot of other bizarre and interesting things that I want to really talk about now for the next five minutes, just to spark your attention. There are a lot of genes that have been become apparent for interesting things. Um, and uh, if I just begin with one, um, uh, the infidelity gene. <laughs> this, uh, so if, if I'd met somebody that I, that I fancied uh, at, at, the, at a, at a um, well, not here tonight, but hopefully, but... Um, uh, <laughs> And if I just took their, their, their glass um, and took a little smear with a, with a uh, tissue, I could take that back to my laboratory and analyze to see whether or not they were a carrier of a variant that might make them more likely to be promiscuous and, and, um, and run away. Now, wouldn't that be valuable? <laughs> you could have that test done before you got married and work out what was going to happen to your partner. Perhaps Tiger Woods uh, should have had that test done before he uh, got married. 